Hello, welcome back to the woods. Now, before we get on with the main video, I thought I'd let you know a little bit about some stuff that we have got coming up. Um, I've got another one of my tried and tested reviews. Uh, it's something I've had for a very, very long time. And with the change in the weather that's going to be upon us fairly soon, it might be an item you will be very interested in. I'm also going to be looking at some stuff from a company called Forest Fundamentals. Uh, a UK based company and from what I've heard their products are very good but we're going to give them a try and uh, let you know what I think. We're also going to do a revisit and we're going to revisit the EB70 from Bluetti, the power bank, solar charge system etc. Just to give you an update on that because if you're in the market for a uh, power bank system, if you spend a lot of time out of doors and you want to uh, Make sure that you've got sufficient power, etc., to run with bits and pieces while you're out. Then it might be something that you're going to be very, very interested in. So the update on that, with the must-know information, will be coming up very soon. Now, in this video, we are going to be looking at knives, and it's really funny in bushcraft. Uh, there's this sort of journey we go upon when we first start we go oh what knife shall i get and we ask around and everyone says standard answer the mora knife which for a very good reason and for a lot of people they don't venture far from the mora knife but for the majority once you've started to master the skills and you've got the sharpening right etc etc you then start to look on to something a little bit more bushcrafty perhaps a bit less plastic because that mora has got that plastic utilitarian sheath and a plastic and rubberized handle and while it's very very practical it doesn't look that bushcrafty now we could go straight for a custom made handmade one with a beautiful leather sheath and a, and a lovely wooden handle but then you're talking some quite big money but there are some factory made models out there uh, which tickle the boxes they've got the right steel They've got wooden handles, they've got a nice leather sheath, and all in all, they look a bit more bushcrafty. Now, there are quite a few knife manufacturers out there who do just that. The likes of uh, Condor knives, uh, they make several bushcrafty type offerings that have the wooden handle and a leather sheath. And they're probably your sort of lower range price-wise uh, you're looking at anywhere between about 45 50 pounds for a few of their, their basic bushcrafty models if you then move up a bracket well then you've got the likes of Castrum and Joker who produce some beautiful knives some of them have almost custom knife quality they are amazing and they are very very nice knives but you're then looking at probably a hundred hundred plus pounds which is about half the price of a, of a custom knife but what if you could start with something that looked a bit bushcrafty, that came with a wooden handle and a leather sheet and decent steel? Mm, is that too big an ask? Well, recently a company called BPS Knives, who are based over in the Ukraine, got in touch. And at first I thought they were Beavercraft, um, but they're not. They're a completely separate company. They're a knife company based over in the Ukraine, as I said. And they wanted to send me uh, one of their latest Bushcraft model knives. Now, I have seen a few other people using them online uh, and on YouTube. And I thought, well, let's see what they're like. So I said, yeah, send me one over. Uh, I'll have a look. I won't do a review straight away because I don't like doing reviews straight away, particularly with something like a knife. I want to have a look at it, I want to try it out, I want to make sure that it is a really good piece of kit because if I'm going to recommend it or not in some cases, um, then yeah, I need to have given it a good try out and you can't do that in five minutes. And here it is. And this 
is the BPS knives, BSH2, bushcraft knife. It comes with a leather sheath, and it's a nice deep leather sheath, as you can see. It comes in a choice of left or right-handed models, which not many others seem to. Certainly, well, Yamora doesn't, that's <laughs> right hand or nothing. Um, I'm not so sure with um, the likes of <clears throat> Castrum, etc. But this one does. Not only that, it also comes with a belt loop and, for those who like them, a dangler as well. So it can be hung off your belt. And I know some companies charge you extra for this. No, not with this. So the sheath looks really good. The stitching is very good quality. Has that rivet in there at the top. It's welted down there, so you've got that welt running through. The thickness of the leather, as you can see, it's a very good finish on there, and it's a good thickness. It's probably two, coming up three mil, perhaps two and a half mil, which is about the same thickness of the blade. So it's ticking all the uh, all the boxes. As I said, this has been correctly finished and sealed off, as has the bit around the top. And it's, it's reasonably rigid, and it feels very, very safe sheath. So the sheath, wonderful. I really like the sheath. There it is, that's the knife out of the sheath. As you can see, wooden handle, the material is walnut. It's got these little hex bolts in there. It's also got a little lanyard hole on the end. The handle is a fairly plain profile, which I like. I don't like lumps and bumps because in use they give you blisters. This one is quite nice and plain. It has a little bit of a guard on the bottom there, but it's not big enough that it gets in your way. It is big enough to let you know that, that sharp edge is coming up. The steel and the fit there, you can see, yeah, it's all completely flush. The steel is about two and a half, three mil thick, and apparently it's 1066 steel, which I've never heard of, but I find it quite appropriate as I'm in the southeast of England. It's a carbon steel, and you can see it's finished with a mirror finish. It's a Scandi grind with uh, a very slight micro bevel and it is a very slight micro bevel uh, and that angle on that is about 22 degrees apparently the tip it's quite a broad tip if you're used to using a, a more knife that's got quite a narrow tip on it this one takes a little bit of getting used to but it's not bad you've got a spine on it that's been squared doesn't feel particularly squared but seems to cast a pretty good spark. So yeah, no problems there. So what's it like in use? Now, when you get it, it, uh, it arrives very well packaged in, in a box marked BPS knives and all nicely wrapped up. The actual blade itself uh, is covered with a, a cardboard mask uh, and the whole thing is wrapped up in a, in a greaseproof paper and it's a lot of attention to detail. The, the sheath is slid in next to the box and taking it out of the box, unwrapping it, first thing you want to see is, is it sharp? So I did the old paper slicing test and as you would expect, perfect. It's sliced through paper, yeah, superbly. Very, very sharp, straight out of the box. Shaving sharp, yeah, I did the old hair on the arm test, it easily did that. So, so far, pretty good. Next thing, actually get it out in the field and use it. So in use, as I said, I've had this a few months and I've put it through its paces and, well, it's been used for all manner of things. I've used it for battening, no problems there. Um, you can batter right out, batter the hell out of it. Um, yeah, it's not going to affect it. 
I find it hard to believe actually that I have beaten it quite as much because it doesn't show any marks of use at all. Um, once I've battened stuff down, I've then used it for shaving feather sticks, which I just shaved one up there just so you could see. And yeah, it shaves a pretty mean feather stick indeed. And yeah, it's quite a nice smooth action. Blade length is about right for doing it. Yeah, all round, excellent for making feather sticks and battening, really good. I've used it for food prep and game preparation. Again, no problems there, cleaned up all right afterwards. Um, yeah, very, very good. I've also done a few more sort of more bushcrafty type things with it. Uh, so I knocked up a netted needle, which certainly that broad tip for getting into these little fine bits in here was a bit of a challenge, but yeah, end result, not bad. And it didn't take that long either. So yeah, from that point of view, pretty good. And also carved up a spoon with it as well. So all in all, as a general purpose bushcraft knife that can do all the things we do in bushcraft, this is pretty damn good. So I know what you're all itching to know. How much did it cost? Now bear in mind, you are getting a knife that's made of a decent steel, which I haven't had to resharpen yet, and I've had this a couple of months, and it's had a lot of use. With a decent walnut wooden handle, decent bolts, etc. A sheath that's made of a decent leather, that's nice and soft, strong and secure, etc. It comes in a choice of left or right-handed with a dangler and a belt loop included. How much is it going to be? If I told you it was £35, that's all, 35 quid. To me, that's quite amazing. Why go out and buy a Mora and then gradually make your way up when you could just buy this, the BSH2, <coughs> And this, well, to be honest, it does everything you want. You don't even need to go and buy a custom knife. Yes, it would be nice, but this ticks all the boxes. And I think it's a great, great bit of kit. Now, when I spoke to BPS, they said, I'll tell you what, we'll send you another knife. Okay, and this one, is the BSH-1. It comes with this sheath, and that's with this one. This is only available in right-handed mode. And this is the knife. Yeah, it's a smaller version. Exactly the same knife, just smaller. So an ideal neck knife, or for a youngster, or for someone with small hands, ideal. A lovely little knife. They sent this one to me, so I can do a giveaway. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So, for one week, if you put your name down, just make a comment in the box below and just say, I'm in. That's all you've got to say. And you've got to be a subscriber to the channel already. So if you're not a subscriber, make sure you do because you don't want to miss out on this. And you could be in with a chance of winning this BSH1 knife from BPS Knives. <clears throat> the draw I will do next Sunday, which I think is the 24th of September. So be quick, get your name in, and you could be in with a chance of winning this, the little BSH1. So to win this BPS BSH1 bushcraft knife, all you have to do in the comments box down below is comment I'm in and obviously you need to be over 18 to enter. So there you go that is my review of the BSH2 from BPS Knives over in the Ukraine and if you're looking for a present to buy somebody 
for Christmas. He was a bit into their bushcraft. You can't go far wrong with this. If you are looking for a knife yourself and you're on a bit of a budget, yeah, go for this. I think it's a great, great item. And thank you very much, BPS, for sending, uh, sending it over to me. I think it's a cracking item, so thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video, then remember, hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. In the description box down below, you will find links to my Instagram and Facebook pages. There's also a link over there to my Etsy shop. And on that front, in the last video, I asked which should we go for on my new badges, sew on or Velcro on? You asked for Velcro, so Velcro one. So that's what the next lot are gonna be, all Velcro backed. Um, they're all ordered. So they should be through and up on the shop in the next couple of weeks with a bit of luck. Anyway, I think that's everything. I've been Neil, and until next time, stay safe in the woods.